all protocol to be observed. I want to kindly stand on the existing protocol. While I do that, I want to recognize also the presence of our party leaders, the national youth leader of our great party, recognize um, the presence of our national women leader, recognize the presence of the Accord State Chairman, the presence of the Accord State Cardinal State Gubernatorial Candidate and his deputy and other candidates. I also want to graciously recognize the presence of the S Councillors Forum National Chairman, the man who has made this meeting possible. Also, the presence of all the S Councillors who are here seated to listen, to hear, and to decide on which path to follow. The next president of Nigeria should be one person who has the passion and value to rescue this nation. The next president of Nigeria is going to be faced with the toughest job ever. Because we live in a nation where 106% of our revenue is being used to service our debt. If Nigeria were to be a company, the option would have been to declare bankruptcy or to sell the company and its entity to those who owe debt. The next president of our nation must be carefully selected. The next president of our nation must not be selected on the basis of sentiment. The next president of this great nation must not be selected on the basis of religious line, tribal sentiment, or competition. To me, choosing the next president of Nigeria should not be based on competition because this is not football. It's about who will rescue us and rescue our children to see the promised land of this great nation. My name is Professor Chris. I've been a social entrepreneur. I've been one person that believes in this country who, before even politics, I have shown value and passion for Nigerian people. You know, when I say this, that I have impacted so much in education, people doubt. I don't think in the history of this country there has been any man who has impacted in education as Professor Chris. You can go and research it, you can go and check it. You might not know about it because I have not been making noise too much about it. Because I've been doing it out of passion and value. There is no state in Nigeria, in Kaduna, in Kano, in Zamfara, in Yobe, that I don't have students, you up to thousands on my scholarship board. If, if you are here today and you are on Professor Chris, Professor Chris scholarship board, can I hear you say aye? Aye! These are my students and scholars in Kaduna. They are not. You can interview them. Every state you go to in Nigeria, there is no state that have not given more than 5,000 people scholarship. God bless no you. And this is not because of politics. I'm doing it out of passion. Some of you sitting here will say, uh, is it only education? As a private person, without government support, I have privately given more than 500,000 Nigerian scholarship wow. without government support. If you are talking about it, I say education. Let me tell you this. Education still remains the only tool that will develop us to compete internationally. Of course, yes. If Nigerians are not educated, our mind will be useless. Of course, yes. If Nigerians are not educated, we are going to produce valueless leaders that will take us nowhere. Of course, yes. The problem we have today as Nigerians is not because of Nigeria but because we have leaders that have value and passion for his people. We need to begin to have leaders that see Nigerians as human beings. Leaders that see everybody as his brother. Leaders that can come out here to talk about what they have done personally, not what they have done in government. Everybody that is running this race with me, we only tell you what they did with government funds. Nobody can tell you what they've done out of their pockets. 
some of them who have been vice presidents, who have been governors, who have been in any position, ask them, when they left the position, what have they been doing? That is how to know men with value. That is how to know men that have passion. Men that change their world, change their world through passion and value. When Nelson Mandela became the president of South Africa, he showed passion by fighting for freedom for his people. I have been fighting for freedom for the emancipation of Nigerians in education for over 15 years. There is no Nigerians who have done that. Check out governors who have transformed their states. Some of them were professors, speak from schools. They have passion and they, cha they change their country. Today, you, many of you praise the governor of Bonu. He was a professor in the school. Today, we praise Abu Sali. He was a professor in the University of Bado. I'm a professor, the youngest professor in the Brazilian race. We are in a season. Yes, see, I have nothing to lose if I don't become the president of Nigeria. But I'm in here to make sure that this country becomes a country we'll be proud of. Are we not tired that we men will die too early? Are we not tired that our wife are, are widows? God answer are we not tired that in states like Zamfara, schools have been shut down for three years? We are, that, we are in that suffering. Are you not tired? We are. Hello? See, we are not in a time of competition. Don't choose your... You can choose governance. You can choose senators. You can choose anybody. But the position of presidency, don't joke with it. Uh, we are not. 2023 will determine a lot in our life. What we'll be doing is... We know that the generation that will change this country is our generation. The older generation have tried their best, but their best is not enough to fix this country. They've tried their best. You need a leader with sophisticated wisdom. You need a leader with improved and technological knowledge to transform this nation. You need the youth. Those that fought for independence of our country did so when they were young. Head of state like Gohan was a president at 32 years. He was even a bachelor as head of state. He got married as head of state. Who tells us that we cannot do it? You know, when, my, when our governor came out, he said, they told us that tomorrow is the future, which is today. And yet, our grandfathers still compete with us in our future. When do we realize our future? Today, I stand in the race with people I respect, though I don't believe in their ideology because we are trained to respect elders in Africa. Yes. So even if I don't believe in their ideology, I will not stand there to insult them. Because even if our fathers are thieves, or our fathers do the wrong thing, it is not to us to tell them. We only report them to their mates to tell them that, that you are not doing the right thing. Mm. We believe in our elders, but many of them have failed us. The youth must begin to stand up to rescue our country. This is our time. We need leaders with passion. We need leaders that can confront security and border challenge headlong. How do we solve our security problem with human intelligence? It's high time for us to start investing in artificial intelligence. Countries all over the world are tackling security challenge with new and advanced methodologies. We are still using archaic and old approach. Our security apparatus have been jeopardized. We do not have intellectuals to, to, to capture crime before crime happens. What we'll be bringing on board is the value to tackle this problem. We came all the way from Abuja to Kaduna, through the road. Mm. And for some months now, the road has been safe. That tells you that if government wants to truly tackle security, it will tackle security. Tackle yes. Of course, yes. Somebody said that if security insurgents is more than 48 hours, it means that government is involved. Yes. We are coming in as a neutral, plain, transparent leaders. We are not affiliated to those that have destroyed this country. The man that will save this nation is that man that is not affiliated, that is not a friend yes, to those that fought this, for, this country. You will do it. That is what we stand for. We are going to be building a system that will create a strong institution. See, no angel can solve the problem of Nigeria without a system and institution. The problem of Nigeria is total systemic failure from education to security to oil and gas to every facet. That is why no system is working in Nigeria today. We are going to be building a system and as a young and smart professor, we are going to be digitalizing all the economy of Nigeria. So that Nigeria can be, we can be database. Nigeria can be known. Today our borders are porous. Are you aware yeah, are. that 1,400 borderline are unguided? In Nigeria we only guide 84 of our borderline. 
So we have influx of non-Nigerians coming in to perpetuate this evil. Nigerians are good people. We are not bad people. You know, in 1970s, in 1960s, when Saamodu Belot went to U.S., he was welcomed like a king. Yes. In 1983, countries like Malaysia came to Nigeria to learn oil palm plantation. Of course. They were taught. In 1976, Nelson Mandela came to Nigeria to beg for financial support. Mm. He was given. Of course, yes. Nigeria was a prosperous nation. Yes. But what happened to us? Ah, we have you know, we had leaders who were not thinking along the increment of Nigeria. We had leaders who were selfish. It's sympathetic. But we must begin to build the nation again. You know, we must try to the extent that our children will say to us, Daddy, at least you try for this nation. Yes, we must begin to build a nation for ourselves. And as we do that, we will begin to achieve the place. And I tell you this, we need a leader who is at the climax of his career, not a leader that is declining. Some of you here who are else counselor, even if you are given the position of a governor, you will, you will run because age is already telling on you. Mm. There are things you cannot do again when you are old. That is the truth. Age is a blessing. When you are aging, you start folding up. You start packing up. It is not then you start ambition. You don't, you don't get ambition at the end of 80 and 70. Ambition is for the youth. Of course. Well, even myself, once I get to 60, I'll start packing up again. Because yes, the climax of our career is between the age of 35 to 50. That is when we can run. That's when we can think. That's when we can wake up in the night. That's when we can solve the enormous problem of Nigeria. If we need, if we are serious about solving our problem in Nigeria, we must begin to engage the youthful mind. That we look at national integration. We live in a country today. This is the most divided time of our history. We are not so divided. Not just the south and the east. Even in the north, there is division among the states. Even in the state, there is division among the local governments. We talk about, we talk about local government autonomy. States are fighting for state security. But local governments are also fighting for local government freedom. We live in a country where even governors will ask local government chairman to sign off. How, we, how are we going to develop if we are not sincere to ourselves? If we want to continue like this, we can continue Nigeria as a nation. But bet me, we will leave and our children, like a, a governor just said, will begin to cause us. That is the truth. We must stand up and solve this problem once and for all. We must stand up and make this country work once and for all. Nobody will come in and solve it for us. We are the one to solve this problem ourselves. But it's a pity that we allow those who will bribe us and bribe our conscience. We know the truth. As you are seated, you know the truth. But some of you are smiling in your mind, saying, let this man live here. But you know the truth, that we are in a mess. Once you sell your conscience, you have bought debt. Once you sell your conscience, you have bought problem. Once you sell your conscience, you have tarnished your future. You know why? Those who bought you will not do those roads, and those roads will kill us. Those who bought you will not equip those hospital, and when you are sick, you will, not, you will die off. Those who bought you will not create education for your children, and our mind will be myopic. We need to stand up and begin to speak the truth. At least let us see. We have just five months to do this job. Can't we stand up in the next five months and begin to dream about this country? Can't we stand up and the next five months begin to say we must solve this problem? In the next five months, we determine our future. Eight years again. Add eight years to your age. Imagine you going through eight years of poverty, eight years of no light. Eight years of sorrow, death. It's too much for us. We are tired. As the youth of this nation, I speak to you. Many youth as if, have even lost their mind because they have been made to believe that the youth is not the youth. Some candidates have now rebranded themselves. They wear jeans and sneakers and pretend to you that they are the real youth. This is the real youth. I am the only youth in the race. And if we must solve this problem, if we must create jobs, if we must reform the judiciary, if we must provide social welfare, then we must ensure that we vote for the right candidate. My name again is Professor Chris. I'm vying for the position of president under the party, the greatest party, I call party. And I want you guys all to support us.